Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today we are going to connect to Lily Munster in the afterlife. Do you remember the TV show, The Munsters? I remember watching it on reruns, so I thought it would be timely to share this during October since it's close to Halloween. All right, so we're actually going to be having a conversation with Yvonne De Carlo, the actress. All right, so I'm gonna invite her in. Okay, so she looks to me like Lily Munster. Sometimes you guys ask about that, how people wear certain clothes or how they have wardrobes or whatever when I'm channeling with them, and that's because I'm clairvoyant. And they will show up in the image that is most comfortable and suited for me and our conversation that we have so that I will recognize them. The same goes for you. The same thing will happen for you. So, Yvonne, I see you as Lily Munster, so thank you so much for that. And I wanted to channel it with you because I thought it would be fun, a fun thing to do during this time of year, the Halloween season. So I've got to ask, were you a fan of Halloween? <laughs> she says, the season change. Yes, I enjoy the season change. I think it's it's beautiful. And she's showing me like the East Coast and the colors and how the like Vermont, New England, the, that area and how like the, the Vermont, New England, Connecticut and how the, the ocean um, seems to change during different times of year. So she's acknowledging the season, but she's not saying if she's a fan of Halloween or not. She sort of says, well, who isn't? Who isn't? All right, so that's how I know you is Lily Monster. So can you talk to us a little bit about your time on the TV show and what your experience was like? She said <laughs> it was good. She said it was, um, it was a different kind of job, you know, not everyone can say that they um, go to work in a haunted house or in a, you know, a scene from like a, a horror movie. <laughs> and my time there was, um, it was unique. It was different. And that's, that's in part why I, I accepted the role. And actually someone else was considered for the role before I was. And so I had the opportunity after the other actress had other commitments or things going on. And so I was actually given the part. So I don't know if you know that, she says to me, I don't know if you know that, but someone else was originally going to be cast in this role. I did not know that. I did not know, interesting. All right, so you had a lot of different castmates. And so is there anything in particular that you wanna share about that or that you can share about that? Frank. And then I see somebody named Mike. I don't know who that is. And she's saying, you know, the camaraderie on set was, was good for the most part, but there were times when there was dissension or there was disagreement. And it wasn't just over money, it was over lines, over um, storylines and things. It was a very different time, you know, Hollywood was very different back then. It's not what you th think of it today. Women definitely didn't have the sort of roles or prominence that, that there is opportunity for now. But for me, being the wife of the lead character gave me some probably more freedom or more flexibility to not just be seen as a sex symbol, but to be seen as someone who actually had some power, some decision-making power, the woman behind the man. And I think that that reflected the times and acknowledging that women were starting to climb into the corporate ladder situations, you know, climbing, climbing into um, more business roles and, and having the opportunity for change. It's not that I was an activist or I see my role as something that's a major that helped to lead women in the world and that, and that kind of a thing. I, I don't see it as that, but for myself personally, it was an opportunity for me to be as expressive as I could and take the character to where I wanted to take her. 
So it feels like you guys, I'm feeling like she was either married to a producer or a director that was related to the show is how it feels. Like, I don't know if she met somebody on set and got married to them or how that went, but I feel like she's connected romantically to a director or producer on the show is what it feels like. I feel like she has children, two boys and a girl or two girls and a boy, because I see a three, but then I see two and then I see one. Now that could mean that she had multiple marriages and had two kids with one person and one child with another, potentially. So that's just what I see. Okay. So there obviously were other roles that you've had in Hollywood. She shows me, um, let's see, like um, a drama, like TV drama. It's hard, she says, it's hard to be typecast, to be perceived in one way. Um, I see her like as a, a nurse or something in some kind of a TV show. Uh, I think it's a nurse or in some kind of medical show or something. She has some kind of role there. And I'm wondering if she was in I'm not sure if this is you or the person I'm channeling next because I can see her as well right here. The person that's I'm channeling next. As a actress on like a Dallas or Dynasty or one of those evening um, dramas that are kind of like an evening soap opera almost. That's kind of what it looks like. Um, so maybe the show that you were in was in the evenings and it was like a dramatic kind of series or show. And I see multiple marriages, more than one. I also see like singing. Did you sing? Singing and dancing, like musical almost like, like a show vibe, sort of, I see that. Okay, I'm trying to think. So is there anything that we, um, oh, okay, so let's ask this. So is there anything that you would, this is good, let me ask this. Is there, I have so many questions in my head, you guys. I'm not sure what to, how to, how to start, but. So as far as an afterlife perspective, let's talk about that a little bit. Is being in the afterlife different than what you anticipated and what you expected, like from when you were a person? Not really. I, I'm not sure that I had any real expectations. It's, as you know, she says to me, as you know, it's going to work out and become what you envision it to be and what you need it to be. It's, it's, it's definitely something that is um, not structured in the traditional sense that people would think, but it's much more of a, um, it's easier than I thought it would be to natural. Natural is the way that I would describe it. It's na a natural part of, of life. And it's not, it's not a, a ending of life. It is a, a continuation of it, but in a way that is really hard to, to talk about, you know, in, in the in the way that people can understand or know it right okay so sometimes when people talk about their death they talk about um, meeting their loved ones on the other side and we've also had afterlife guests that have talked about not that kind of an experience so how would you describe that what was it like for you when you transitioned out of this life she showed me like a cancer so her body must have been sick is how it feels to me but not unexpected, that her death wasn't unexpected. That's how it feels. Not unplanned or something. That's a weird way to phrase it, not unplanned. Hmm, that's interesting. So when you say that, not unplanned, do you mean, I have to ask you this part, do you mean um, that your soul had some kind of a, a influence over that, over the, the death, the time of death, the manner of death for you? That's absolutely what I mean. That's absolutely, that, that's absolutely correct. She said, that's accurate. And that's a fair thing for people to know. People should understand that 
that they have choice in that, whether they're conscious of that or not, that there is choice, there is individual choice in death. And ju just as there is in life, in life there is as well. You guys, I see her also married to a businessman or having some kind of business arrangements. Um, I don't know if it's a family-based business that she's in or if her family, so if it's a family, okay, so I see a business thing and I see a man. So the man feels like a significant other, like a husband or a spouse, and that almost feels like a family business. So either it's actually a really like a lucrative business, like they got involved in, I don't know, makeup or something. I'm not saying they did, but for example, they, they created something. Or it might be that everybody was in the business. So like even her kids and her significant other, her husband or what have you, was in acting or theater or Hollywood. Okay, so that in the business. And there's also this, hmm, this feeling of, I don't want to say competency, that's not right. What's fair and what's not fair. There's, people complain a lot about the decisions and the course of their life, the, their life, that their li life takes. But it's really, it is completely on you. It's completely up to you, even though it, it's circumstances cause you to react or respond in a way. However, the truth is, is there's not, there's not outside forces that are controlling you. It's completely inner, inwardly. So if there's something that you need to do to adjust your course, you are at will to do that. This is what, what Yvonne De Carlo is sharing with us, okay? This is what she is sharing from the afterlife, from her perspective as a spirit when we're talking actually about transitioning into the afterlife. So Yvonne, can you please share if when you left your human physical body at the point of death and you transcended into the afterlife, what was that like? Did you actually, were you greeted by loved ones or what, it, what was your actual personal experience? It was some of those things that you have shared before where there was a lot of there's a lot of warmth. There was a lot of energy around me and it felt warm. I felt I never felt afraid. I wasn't scared at any point. There were no feelings of fear. And it was sort of like a dream to first feel that incredible warmth in the body and then recognizing that I could actually see these layers of light and, and it was just all around me and it was in front of me and it was just everywhere. And so the colors she's showing me, you guys, are like a beautiful pale lavender lilac color and a light, light pink and a little bit of a blue, tiny bit of gold, like a muted yellow just all these beautiful colors, soft and warm, and it's very peaceful. It's not, there's not a struggle here. She says there's not a struggle. There is a feeling of, there is a bit of a feeling for a brief moment of sadness, of sort of like a, a recognition of what is being left behind, what cannot be carried with you. You know, they always say that, the cliches of, bringing your baggage with you and you can't you can't bring material things into the afterlife you can't bring all of these things that when your life is over it's it's done here but it really there there definitely was for me at least a moment where there was a recognition or i really felt that was true and there's sort of a, a sadness in that and it's not, it's not as though I had a moment to think about regrets or review my life at that point. It just was a, a quiet a knowing, just a knowing of that, a sense of that life was complete regardless of what I felt I had not done or would have wanted to maybe do differently or had experienced it. It was just, it was done like the final act in a play it was done and to answer your question about the about relatives 
yes, there were familiar there were familiar faces to me when after the time when I felt all this warmth and the colors and and then there there was one point after beyond that where there were faces familiar faces for me where I felt so comfortable and connected surrounded by family loved ones and specifically I would say my father and you guys are like a male and it may have been like a husband or someone else too because I see like three men three males one seems a lot older so either it, it feels like a dad or somebody that was a father like figure and then there's two others so it could be a brother or husband or two husbands or what have you, you can see that and then um, there might actually be a child on the other side for her one of her kids may have preceded her in death and there's somebody on the other side related to that. If it's not her direct child, it could be a stepchild or it could be like a niece or nephew, that kind of a thing, okay? Um, and then, so she shows me lilies, like Lily Monster. And I see like Hollywood Forever Cemetery. I don't know for sure if she's buried there, but she's showing me Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Just, there you go, I don't know, we'll have to see. Maybe some of her co-stars or people that she's related to are there. And, all right. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us, anything as far as messaging goes? She says, I think I have. I think the afterlife, talking about what it's like here in, this it's it's sort of like an alternate reality in some ways I, I hesitate to use those words when she says that i hesitate to use those words because that's not really effective but as you understand there's no there's really no words to explain the this process and what this is but i hope that i've um, i've done my best to do that to share that with you Yes, you have. Yes, you have. Thank you. Wow, that was unexpected, wasn't it? All right, viewers, you have been watching a channeling session with Yvonne DiCarlo, known as Lily Munster, from that TV show way back in the 60s. You may have seen it on reruns, or you may be familiar with other works that she has done. And if you are, go ahead and put those in the comments below if people want to check out Yvonne DiCarlo's work as well. All right, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it very much. All right, you guys, remember, the purpose here is always to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope because this, this is your life now. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.